some people know God's laws, others don't care. But on whatever side anybody is, there are laws. God said, He said, as long as the earth remains, night and day will never cease. Times and season will remain. As we all see, they remain. And there is nothing anybody does, nothing anybody imagines that ever affects this. In fact, we all function within the laws that God has given for the earth. And thank God, those laws are never broken, no matter what people do. The laws of God for the earth, this orderly, wonderful world, remain infallible and unbreakable. The laws of God evidently have a purpose, and that purpose is called order. God wants order in his universe, and that's why he gives laws. Human beings are not left out. God also gave us laws for the same purpose. So we live in peace, we live in paradise, so that we, 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 we live an orderly life, and we all enjoy this wonderful world. And if the world is in trouble today, it, it, I mean, you don't, need a, you don't need rocket science to know, and you don't need to swim across the Atlantic Ocean to know that it is because people break God's laws. And so we can change that, I believe, very strongly. You can change that. No, I can change that too. We all can change that. Our leaders can change that. And in everything we do, we can change that because what will it take to get people to come to that place where they say, oh, oh it's not working. It, it, the whole world is afraid of a third world war because men break God's laws. By men, we mean, we mean male and female. The laws of God are never broken. And they are not the laws of a dictator like somebody who might want to, to argue. There was a signpost in one community, you know, a signpost with an arrow saying, do not go this way. And so along came some very, you know, very restive youths and, you know, they, they want to have fun. And when they saw the signpost, they said, no, no, don't go this way, go that way. The, the, the community put the sign there. So that, that those rest of you say, aha, throw, throw that away, all these nonsense laws. We don't want to enjoy life. And so they went and fell into a terrible pit. <laughs> they fell into a terrible pit. See, they have never gone that way before. But the community know that that pit is there. That's why they put the law, that sign post there. That's why they gave that law. Don't go this way. It's not out of uh, a dictator. No, it's so that you enjoy life. You know, those youths did not obey and they, they, they fell into trouble. The whole world has fallen into trouble today because they don't listen to God. But God wants to convince you that you can be different. Taste it. God's laws are not hard at all. They are very sweet, in fact. When you obey them, every time I do them, I find that there is joy in my heart. And what are the laws of God? God said, this commandment I give to your fathers, obey my voice. And the Spirit of God is, is talking to you today to convince you, not to force you. No, he gave everybody free will. But to say, no, my child, you need to listen to me more. You know, things may not be going so well with you. The things are not working very well. But we can, we can I'm, I'm your father, says God Almighty. You have a father in heaven. So I expect you to listen to my advice, to listen to my, my counsel, to do what I say. You see, that's what the laws are. What are the purpose for the law? So there is order. So that you enjoy life. You, we, this is what paradise, why paradise is in heaven. And when we pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. You know, meaning, may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. He's, everybody in heaven follows his, his advice. And so there is peace and joy and happiness. But here on earth, majority don't. So the whole place is troubled. But we can change that. He said, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God. To fear the Lord your God. Somebody said, ah, I told you, God wants us to fear him. No, don't be in a hurry. I tell you why. It's not the fear that you, you, you are thinking about. You know, like the fear when you see a, a, a serpent, for example, there's a kind of dread. No, not that kind. This is different. The mother said to the child one day, this knife is very sharp. Don't touch it. All right? It, it, Obviously, she does not want the child's hand to be cut or to try the child to get hurt. So the child said, no, I don't have to, I don't have to. So the, the, the father said, well, if you do that, I'm going to whip your buttocks because I'm desperate. I really, really am. I cannot, I cannot see you fall into a pit because if you do, I will have to jump into that pit too because I love you. I don't want that. You know, and that's why God sent his firstborn to come into the world. He had to jump into this cesspool. That is the world today, this troubled earth. If, if we had listened to him, there would, have, there would have been no need, you know. 
But because we all disobey God and the consequences of sin is everywhere, there is murder, there is killing every day we hear of, or there is war, rumors of war, stealing is so rife, it's lying and all kinds of terrible things. People are dying. People are passing through very difficult life and difficult situations because they don't listen to God. What a cesspool the world has, has become. What like, a, like a, a, a terrible pit, muddy pit. Very bad. A lot of people are, are living miserably. The suffering is increasing. Why? For one simple reason. My son, just do as I tell you and you'll enjoy life. So because we didn't do as he, we, he told us to do, he had to, he had to jump into this cesspool with us. He loves us deeply. And that's why Jesus, he, he had to come. What he accomplished also among all the numerous things that the Son of God accomplished on the cross is the opportunity that he gives us to change our ways. Say, look, anybody who will repent of their sins, that soul, I will forgive because I have paid the price. All right? The price has been paid. So it's like giving us a new lease of life. Say, okay, let us start again. All right? You can start again. No matter how, how you have blown it, no matter how, how, what sin you have committed, the disobedience, and no matter what you're going through as a consequence, you know, we can start again. Let's start again. God is saying, telling someone today, let us start again. I love you deeply. I cannot help it, you know, except you insist that you, you, you must continue in rebellion to the end. You must, and then I will have to, I am God. I have to judge. And that's why he created hell, but not for human beings. He created hell for the cause of sin, Satan, the devil, and all of them. But anybody who insists, we, his, the Lord Jesus said, I'm tired of crying. Don't go to hell. It's unnecessary for anybody to go to hell. Just turn. You see, and that's what the laws are. Our God is a consuming fire, you see. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What does that mean? Does it mean that God wants people to die? That's why I said the wages of sin is death. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit said the reason why he decreed that the wages of sin is death is because he does not want people to continue in sin. That is the loving father for you. He doesn't want us to continue in sin. God said, I don't want that. I don't want sin to continue forever. Can you imagine sin like the, the world is today? It's going to get worse eh? with all these nuclear bombs and everybody, they are investing billions every year, not on, 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 on good things, but uh, you know, they are on, on weapons of mass destruction, no matter how they try to paint it, you know, peace through strength. That's total rubbish. You know, the, and it's going to get worse. It is precisely so that we do not continue in sin. I don't want that, God. God, with heartfelt, deep love, is telling the whole world, I don't want that. I cannot allow sin to continue forever. You have to listen to me, the purpose for the laws of God. You have to do as I say. The reason is so there is, there is, there is peace all over there. There is there's paradise. The paradise is restored. I made it. Can you imagine the wisdom of God as the Bible says? It is indeed, verse 14 of Deuteronomy chapter 10. He said, Indeed, heavens and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God. Also, the earth with all that is in it. Imagine who we are talking about. We are talking about the owner, the possessor of the heavens and the earth, the one who created us. Should we listen to him? Of course. Doesn't nature tell us that's the right thing to do? To listen to the one who, who possesses, the, who owns the heavens and the earth, the, the, and everything that is in them, and who gave birth to me and to you, to us? Shouldn't we listen to him? If, we, if, if nature tells a child, yeah, I need to listen to my father, especially, especially when they are still young and they are innocent, you know, like, as they go on and they begin to be fed by virus of, of rebellion, in educational systems and all kinds of systems, children become more and more rebellious. But as for parents, keep training the child the way it should go, and when they are grown up, they will not depart from it. He says, so fear the Lord your God. You know that he will punish. He will, he will whip somebody if they continue in sin. But not, so it is, it, is, it is so that the child will not do it. It's so that you and I today, as you hear this message, you say, look, I need to change my ways. I need to give this some serious thought before the time is over. Because time is all we have to do as we please. You know, there is a time to be born, there is a time to die. Before that, there's nothing you can do. After you die, we all, with the way of all flesh, we have no control. But the period in between God has given to us to express ourselves. Let's not use our time badly. Repent. 
turn to God. Let us turn to God individually and collectively. And let us say to God, your laws are right. Because if you look into God's laws, they are, there is nothing wrong with them. They are so, they are so, I told you, I said they are so sweet to obey. You know, to walk in, in, the, in the holy ways of God and to love him is the right thing to do. It's very nice. It's very fulfilling. Give it a try. You know, you know, the devil is the one propagating that, you know, you know, putting, you know, whispering, oh, they are so difficult. It's impossible to be holy like God. God said, no. You think God was playing when he said, oh, he, he, he knew it's not possible when he said, be holy as I, your God, am holy, as is written in scripture, Leviticus 10.10. 10. He knows. It's, he will do it. Just give me your heart, he says. Come to me, all you that labor on a heavy lady. I will give you rest. Trust me, I, it, I, I love you, God, says the Lord God Almighty, to all of us, to the whole world, to every human being on the face of the earth. I love you deeply. I made you. But, but you, although you do not yet know me, but I want you to know me. So come, call out to him by faith. Say, Father God in heaven. A lot of people are doing so. You hear know, a lot of testimony. Especially when things have gone so bad. So, oh God, if you are really there, please save me, do something. And many of them come back to say, and I met God. It can be you, but we don't have to be in trouble, near-death experience before we come to our senses. You know, although unfortunately many die, even without giving their lives to God. As, as for such, the only thing left is hell. You know, because God, that's why he's God. He has to execute justice. So it is very sweet to walk in the ways of God and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today, for your good. God is saying, look, the commandments I give to you, you and what are the commandments? Okay, let, let's just, let us x-ray some, one or two. So, for example, all the laws are wrapped up in this too. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How does God interpret that? Let me tell you. He said, I love you, and you love me. This is all that really matters. I love you. The father loves the child and the child loves the father. What a fantastic relationship, fulfilling relationship that is. That's what God is saying to you. I love you deeply. That is, that is, that is sure. Because I prove that love. Greater love has no man than this, than that a man will give his life for his brethren. For his, and that's what he calls you and I, my friends, my brethren. If only you will, we, we would turn our world, all, all, the human race, all of us together, will turn from, our, from wicked ways and begin to you know, obey God's laws. He said, I love you and you love me back. You know, this is, this, this is, this is why I created you. I created you to have pleasures in myself, in you. And how do we demonstrate our love? He said, only listen to me. You know, I, you know why I created you? To, to, to have pleasures in myself, in you. To have pleasures sharing my contentment with you. You know, sharing my knowledge with you. Sharing my radiant you know, my fragrant radiance with you, you know, sharing my pleasures, at the pleasures of my right hand forever with you, sharing, you know, uh, you know, my capacity seen in the heavens and earth that he created, we are co-creators with him. That's why I made you to enjoy sharing my knowledge. So the laws of God are the product of his knowledge for us to make us, to bring good to us. He said, obey these laws which I command you today. He said, for your good. Because we're not talking about any other. We're talking about the one true God. There's only one God in the whole universe who owns the heavens and the earth. Alright? So, my brothers and sisters, the purpose for the law is, is clear. It is for order. And it's so that good will come to me and you, so that we enjoy life. We enjoy peaceful coexistence and relationship with our maker, with our God, at whose right hand are pleasures forevermore. Oh, I really want to, with all my heart, I, I, I invite you to explore, you know, be convinced, to explore the commandments of God. They are not difficult. They are very, 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 very easy, sweet, and you will, you will, be, you will live peacefully and you will be happy. Whatever the situation, give your heart to Christ. Say to Jesus, according to the will of the everlasting Father, I want to learn of you. Read, go and, listen, go and study what Jesus says. They are life. Say the words that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. You know, they will bring you life. They will, they will make you stand, study strong, and in the end you have eternal life. Go and read it for yourself. Don't be shy. Go read the, the, the Gospels. Whoever you are, whatever religion you are in, 
whatever economic status you are in, you, you, your soul is important to God. So go read, go find out from the Gospels what Jesus says and then make your own informed decision. You too will discover what millions are discovering every day, that the words of Christ, there is no one like Jesus. The things he says are life indeed. If you listen to the arm, I trust God today that if you will take up this challenge to go see for yourself what Jesus says and who he is, the Spirit of God, the power of God is present to help you to understand it. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for doing this too. Great are you from everlasting to everlasting. So my, my brothers and sisters, this is how, the laws of God are good laws. I, I love them. I enjoy them. I know I'm not the only one. Millions all over the world. And you too can, you too can be one of us. You too can. You, you too. All of us, we are in it. Oh, I wish everybody in the world were here and, and change. We all agree with one course and say, like, like Israel said that day, he said, all that God has commanded us to do, that we will do. So the purpose of the law is clear. It's for our own good. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for convicting and convincing hearts to turn to Jesus today, to obey your command that anyone who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. But the one who does not believe will not be saved. Not because you want any to perish, but because you, because you want everybody to believe and be saved. Let this power, the power of God, please, convict and convince the hearts of everyone my Lord causes to hear these words to the glory of your greatness. So that day all of us, not one will be missing. No one need to go to hell again. But all of us will, will spend eternity with our Creator God, the owner of the heavens and the earth, with everything in them. With everything in them. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have preached, taught, and prayed. Amen.